My grandmother was an artist, and although she was a craftswoman, but uh, because of her, I, I always knew that I was going to be an artist, so right from when I was a tiny little child. I went to college and majored in art, and then I went to art school. I went to Rhode Island School of Design and ended up moving out here to the West Coast to Seattle and going to grad school at the University of Washington. I consider myself a dancer. When I work three-dimensionally, kinesthetically, I can feel the energy moving through my body and I can tell how to make the forms. I always loved to draw as a kid and was really encouraged in that. Then when I went to college, I thought about being a writer or be, taking philosophy or, or being an artist and, and the art just kind of overcame everything else. So I went to Western Washington University for my BFA and then I got a master's in painting at San Francisco Art Institute. I was also doing filmmaking on the side. I was going to be a painter. That was it, you know. And then I went to grad school and all of that got thrown out the window and I just started experimenting and trying all kinds of things and I was exposed to performance art and installation art and a wide variety of things that got me thinking in a new way. So after graduate school, my way of working changed pretty dramatically. My name is Margo Myers and I opened up this shop that we're in a couple years ago that specializes in all different types of printmaking. And before that, I worked in my garage just up the street for about uh, eight years here in Bellingham. So it was a big move to, to come here and have a public space where people can come and uh, work with me. It was quite easy to be an artist in the San Francisco Bay Area because I was uh, an artist in residence for the city of Palo Alto on the San Francisco Peninsula. And so I already had some kind of prestige or people could believe in me. So when I and my colleagues had open houses, studio sales, people would just come with their checkbooks ready. I find that people in Bellingham are enthusiastic and so I can create um, a pop-up gallery for installations or dance sculpture pieces that I want to do. I get a lot of great positive comments. It's such a beautiful area, it's really easy to see why artists move here. When I came to Bellingham, I ended up, you know, selling very, very, very few pieces. There are very few galleries. It's pretty much impossible for me to sell my work, especially this kind of avant-garde work that I do. I feel like people are really generous here in how they view artists and how they try to help them. So I have people pitching in to help me on every level. People are just really encouraging. I have friends and family that are just always like, you can do it, you know, keep going, because that kind of brings me to the other side of it. It can be really lonely sometimes being a younger artist in Bellingham. I feel like the scene, you know, we've lost a lot of our galleries in the last, you know, since I've lived here, we've lost a couple of decent galleries. You know, studio spaces are really expensive, uh, rent, rent is very high, and there's not a lot of community support in terms of purchasing art. So I would say it's not the easiest place to be an artist, and I do think that there's room for better cultural experiences in Bellingham. I think in general it's a community that, that cares about the arts. I've really enjoyed friendships with some art students from Western, you know, who've graduated and I always encourage them to go to grad school or to get into art residencies or post back programs. So in that sense, I encourage them to leave Bellingham and go elsewhere before they come back, if they want to come back. Often they do because it's such a beautiful place to live. It's very hard to figure out how to make a living and produce your work and you have to find some way to do the two so that you can support yourself and you still have enough time to do the work that you're meant to do. Something that gets said to me always by people who are more advanced than me is that I just like never stop trying and never stop applying for things and looking for opportunities. 
there's something to be said for just continuing to say the same thing but finding maybe a better way to say it and hopefully like the work visually evolves and your ability to articulate it evolves at the same time and so I think that does help and pay off. I think you have to really think about who you are and what would suit you. If you want to be a full-time artist, like in today's world, putting yourself out there in a really extreme way. I think just building connections with people, like having a lot of friends who are artists and who aren't artists. For me, place is really important, and I've seen how my friends who stayed in one place have been more successful because being an artist just requires you to have a good network. And if you move a lot, that's pretty hard to maintain. So I really recommend figuring out where you want to be and then making that your, your base. If it's really your, your passion and, and it makes you come alive, like what better thing could you spend your time on? I think we all have a contribution to make. So make the work.